Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. In the first half of this video, I'm gonna cover some updates, what's going on with the Ripple versus SEC stuff. And then on the second half, we're gonna cover what's going on within the, the general market, the regular stock market, CPI and inflation data, the Fed, and looking up some updates of what's going on within the uh, crypto community. So looking at the CoinGecko here, we're currently sitting at a $1.82 trillion market cap, currently up 1% for the day. Looking at the top 10 Bitcoin sitting at 39,182, Ethereum 2,591, Tether's Tether, Binance Coin sitting at 376, XRP sitting at 79 cents, up 4.4% for the day in the seven day period, 11.9%. Obviously there was a lot of positive news that came out with the verdict from Judge Torres where uh, the SEC's uh, attempt to strike a uh, ripples fair notice was denied so there was a huge uh spike in, in price action there terra sitting at 89 dollars solana 82 dollars cardano 79 cents and dots in at 18 dollars coming over here to the bitcoin fear and greed index uh we're sitting at this 22 range so uh just like yesterday we were at 22 kind of stayed at this range so there's still a lot of uncertainty within the market and we've been in this range for some time now uh coming over here I like this uh, this, this tweet, uh, Real XRP Boy had put it up from uh, David Schwartz, and it says, XRP was given to Ripple, not created by Ripple. So I like how he says this. He calls, so the SEC, uh, you know, any any people that, have, that has reservation against, you know, Ripple and XRP status, Gary Gensler, just so we're all on the same page. XRP was given to Ripple, not created by Ripple. So that's, that's huge right here. So obviously we know about the big bombshell, the big news that came out that I just talked about with the denial of uh, the SC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice affirmative defense is denied. So the judge had, had uh, Annalisa Torres had declared that in her judgment there. So that's massive. Coming over here, Jeremy Hogan says, a new new victory uh, video. So if you haven't, go to Legal Briefs on YouTube and check out Jeremy Hogan's recent video here. But take a look at all his videos when he's been covering the case. He's actually been a huge and vital part of the XRP and crypto community in general, just kind of bringing out the legal side of things to make it un more understandable and easy to to understand and, and know just in you know normal normal people's terms. So he says today. We, of course, talk about the denial of the SEC motion to strike fair notice offense, but we also see what the main issue in the case is teeing up to be and look at how the SEC expert report does on that issue. Huge week. So he before all this verdict even came out, he was talking about the next couple of months were going to kind of be heating up when it comes to this case. And obviously we had the huge bombshell yesterday. Now he's talking about this uh, SEC expert report. So the report basically... They hired out uh, some uh, economic pr uh, doctor professor to uh, pretty much argue that uh, the price action and price increases directly reflected towards Ripple. Ripple influences and impacts the price action of, of XRP is pretty much what they're trying to uncover. And he kind of talks about it a little bit in this video, which we all know that, you know, just like all other digital assets, we all follow what Bitcoin does. And that's just the reality coming down here. Uh, XRP Crypto Wolf says, can you summarize the XRP lawsuit victory uh, video in a tweet, please? And thank you. This is huge. He goes, summary, LFG, Les Blanken, go. I mean, quick summary, that's huge. So this is huge, huge week coming. Uh, I, I want to thank Tim for uh, posting these uh, these uh, videos here. This is with Charles Gasparino and uh, Liz Clayman on Fox Business. So let's take a listen into these. Between the Securities and Exchange Commission and Ripple. Joining us now with the latest is Charlie Gasparino. Okay, What's so going I, on? I, I, I believe I've got my hands around this. And, you know, some of this stuff gets a little te technical, but as part of the case, so SEC sues Ripple saying it used XRP as a security and it should have registered it. Thus therefore, XRP, it's not a currency. Yeah, and therefore, no, no exchange will take it. You can't, you know, your value, your value goes down dramatically. And uh, But Ripple has said that the SEC did this out of the blue and they filed a motion to have the, um, the case dismissed because the SEC didn't give it fair warning that, um, that XRP was considered a security. Okay, bear with me here. Uh, the SEC filed a motion to get that part, that motion, dismissed. The judge said, no, that motion could stay. He still has to rule on a motion of fair notice that whether or not Ripple uh, was given fair notice. Now, if the SEC loses the, no the motion, and then it obviously did today on the, loses the motion and get it thrown out, it has to lose the motion to, if it loses the motion that it did not give fair notice, this case probably is over. 
And that's why you see it. There's a greater likelihood this case could get thrown out based on this ruling. And that's what you're seeing right now. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying when you unpack all this, the motion to get this case dismissed, filed by Ripple, is the way I understand it, because the SEC didn't give it fair notice while it was issuing that XRP that it was an illegal issuance of that XRP, sale of that XRP, I should say, that could stay, and there is still a chance the judge could rule in, X, in Ripple's favor saying that you, SEC, screwed up by not giving it fair notice. This case is out. You know, Ripple wins. I mean, that's what that's the bet you're seeing now. That's why it's popping. And, and by the way, Bitcoin is down 2.6% you know, this is, today. This, You've got Ethereum down, so here's the thing. Terra's down, but XRP is moving on this you, news. Now, here's the thing. I, well, we just get, we get a couple things here. Ripple tells Fox Business they believe the motion will lead to all SEC claims ultimately being dismissed. Um, well, that could be wishful thinking, uh, but I get yeah, it. I get it. I mean, it's kind of what I'm telling you. Uh, we have John Deaton, one of the uh, private security. Uh, private securities lawyers that is aiding Ripple in the in the um, in the case because he's an XRP holder. Uh, it's pretty. It would, you know, John doesn't bulls. I always said doesn't BS. Okay, he calls it kind of straight. Uh, as big a win as this is for Ripple, it's even a bigger loss for the SEC. It, it, I think it kind of is because the judge is saying there's some reasonable grounds that you didn't give them um, a fair notice. So we're going to keep it in there and I'll decide on it. Um, so just keep in mind, I, I don't tell people to buy anything based on this, but net net, it's a good ruling for the XRP holders and for Ripple. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go to pivot a little bit to. <laughs> so he almost sat there and he almost said the BS word on, on TV. <laughs> and I love how Liz just kind of smirked at him. But I mean, as, as you can see. There's a lot of positivity in regards of the Ripple camp and, you know, that's positivity for the XRP community, which is huge. And just for the entire crypto market, because this case is truly going to set precedent on, you know, the entire space. Coming over here, Johnny Deaton has a, a tweet thread here that I thought was interesting. He says, Congressman, <clears throat> when Clayton was chairman of the SEC, he could have advanced the crypto space. He had fellow Republican Commissioner Hester Pierce and Elad Roisman by his side. He had a 3-2 uh, three majority vote. He could have passed a safe harbor establishing minimum thresholds to be met. Instead, during the most politically divided environment possible, he voted opposite his fellow Republican commissioners and voted with the two Democrats directing the filing of the enforcement action on his last day against Ripple and XRP. I'm sure his new employer's $1 billion bet on Bitcoin and Ethereum is a, coincidence, is, is a coincidence. I'm sure the fact that Consensus and Joseph Lubin were represented by Clayton's law firm, uh, Sullivan and Cromwell, was coincidental. I'm sure Consensus buying Quorum's JPM coin, hint, hint, XRP competitor, is nothing to, is nothing to uh, coincidence, or he kind of puts up the eyes here, but he says he's pretty much calling out just like the stuff that shouldn't be dismissed and shouldn't be overlooked. Like this is, this is shady. This is a scandal. This is unethical. So coming over here, if we take a look at this uh, interview with <clears throat> Thinking Crypto, this is, um, is it Tony? Can't remember my, yeah, this is Tony. So take a look at this uh, this interview he had on Thinking Crypto. And you leave the SEC and you become a partner with them. That's not a small thing. Yeah. That's not something investors help write your speech. Okay, that's not small conflicts. Right. When when the when the Ethereum investors help write your speech that gives a free pass to Ethereum, and then you leave the SEC and you become a partner with them, that's not a small thing. Yeah, that's not something that you just trivialize, that you minimize, that you dismiss. Say, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Bullshit. And you <laughs> well, you got uh, Johnny Deaton saying the BS word there. But that's that's kind of the, the the stuff, the shady behavior, and all this this just the shadiness in general that you know the Ripple and XRP community has been dealing with with this SEC versus uh, Ripple lawsuit, and then you have the Ethereum free pass and all the parties involved in that. So, like uh, Jeremy Hogan says, uh, things are going to be quite interesting. It's going to be a huge week in the next couple of months if it does go on for the next couple of months. It's going to be quite interesting. So come over here looking at <coughs> CNBC. So if we look at the SP 500 and Nasdaq. Uh, SP 500 down 1.3%, uh, NASDAQ down 2.18%. So obviously there's a lot of different narratives going on. I mean, obviously you have the Russian Ukraine uh, uh, invasion stuff, a lot of uh, CPI data stuff that came out. 
Obviously, we we know from our recent video, we've made inflation roll 7.9% in February as the food and energy costs push us price to highest in more than 40 years. So obviously, you know, with all this going on, there's a bunch of different nar narratives out there, a lot of negative uh <clears throat> You know, uh, news media coverage. We have Jerome Powell and the Fed meeting on March 15th and 16th. There's so many moving parts going on. So when this uh, meeting happens, we're going to find out what Jerome Powell and the Fed are going to do in regards of combating inflation. You know, where they're going to, you know, uh, raise the inflation rates to 0.25 or uh, 25 basis points, as they say, you know, kind of because the market's been factoring in that. Are they going to be more? hawkish and, and increase that who knows obviously we, we got you know after march 15th and 16th we have one two three four five six more meetings after that so they have a lot a lot of more meetings to continue to raise the inflation rates if you know if they tend to do so so there's so much going on obviously it's di direct reflection of kind of what we're seeing uh in our market in particular just just a lot of uncertainty within the market so looking at some positivities ebay shows investors digital wallet as it explores crypto and other payment options the e-commerce side began enabling nft sales last year so that's huge e ebay is a, is a massive is a massive company so for them to you know have the access into one day enable you know cryptocurrency payments or you know, and accepting of those payments is absolutely massive. Just more eyes, more users on it. And then lastly, this is huge. This is uh, some big news to share today. Yuga has acquired the CryptoPunks and MeBits collection from Larva Labs, and the first thing we're doing is giving full commercial rights to MT holders, just like we did from Board at Yacht Club and Mutant at Yacht Club owners. So that's huge. Someone had uh, put up a tweet saying, "When you acquire a uh, boardwalk and what was it in Park Place? So like if you play Monopoly, if you can get those two uh, blue landmarks before you pass go, that's absolutely massive. So that's pretty much what they're saying. Like Yuga Labs just acquired something absolutely massive." But with all that being said, that's kind of what's going on in the market. It's kind of my sentiment, what's going on. We're going to continue to follow the uh, Ripple versus SC case and then kind of look at the overall market and kind of see the positives and negatives within the market. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.